happening. Hopefully nobody, hopefully nobody objects to that. Uh, yeah, we had a very late public hearing last night. I, I see some of you on this meeting were on that too. So uh, good to see you again and, and thanks for your participation. And I see a lot of familiar faces. So again, uh, greetings to everybody uh, who's been part of these discussions in the past. I'm sorry, I, it's going to be really hard to talk if people aren't muted. Great. Uh, it's uh, welcome to everybody who's been part of this in the past and uh, also to people who are newly getting engaged in this topic of short term rentals. Uh, so just a little bit about the genesis of this meeting. Uh, we had initiate we had uh, conducted a set of uh, community meetings, discussions around, uh, you know, the the concepts that we would want to bring into our short term rental regulations uh, that we are considering. We're, we're considering recommending regulations to the Board of Supervisors about short term rentals. Uh, you know, in those meetings, there were a lot of people who had you know, questions or issues or concerns about the two-year moratorium that the Board of Supervisors approved for West Marin. They approved that last May, uh, and it would be in place for two years. And so since we really wanted to focus on the regulation, the, the longer-term regulations going forward uh, in those community discussions, and there were a lot of people there who wanted to talk about that, uh, we, you know, decided that it would be most helpful to bring the, you know, people's uh, questions and feedback about the moratorium to a separate discussion. So that's what this is tonight. And, uh, you know, really, I just wanted to set some mm -hmm. expectations and understandings. No, uh -oh. I'm sorry, if people could mute, thank you. Uh, some ex <laughs> Some expectations and understanding about about tonight. Uh, you know, we are. You know, we want to uh, hear from you, and you know, make sure that uh, we're understanding. We're open to listening uh, to everybody's uh, to everybody's concerns about the moratorium. I uh, we are not intending to be bringing forward a recommendation to the board that they change the moratorium. Would you take your sound away? It's totally different from what I used to. Uh, okay, great. Uh, we're, we're not intending to be bringing forward a recommendation to the board that they change the moratorium. I just, I just wanna put that out there uh, at the beginning of this discussion. Uh, just to to make that clear to you, we we uh, that would take you know a whole new board action to do, and we really want to focus at this point on uh, thinking about regulations going forward, um, and you know including regulations that are um, respond responsive to the issues and the concerns that you have about the moratorium situation. So what I mean by that is. Uh, we are not expecting or intending in the context of our regulations to be carrying forward um, the current pause on new short-term rental licenses. Uh, that is not the purpose of the regulations. They are not uh, about banning short-term rentals at all. Short-term rentals bring a lot of, of value yeah. to Marin County in a lot of ways and to um, Okay, so uh, both property owners, I th can you hear me? Thumbs up? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, short-term rentals bring a lot of benefits to the county in a lot of ways. Uh, we are not looking to end them as a use at all. We're just uh, looking in our longer-term regulations to ban them, or to, not to ban them, I'm sorry. We're looking at our longer-term regulations to balance uh, short-term rental activity in communities in Marin County. Uh, so uh, we are 
you know, working within the timeline of the two-year moratorium uh, to develop regulations that we can bring forward at or before the time that that moratorium expires. Uh, and so that's, uh, that is what we're working on right now. Uh, we do want to give people the opportunity to be sure to let us know um, what, you know, what your thoughts or concerns are about the current moratorium situation so that we understand them as we think about future regulations and also think about our future communications um, around our activities because we understand from what we've heard that our efforts might not have uh, have completely reached everybody that they needed to. So um, that is the purpose of tonight. We do want to uh, go forward with uh, some ground rules, which Kathleen is going to go over. Um, and uh, just make sure, I, know, I think anybody who was in these conversations uh, a few months ago knows that uh, they got a little lively um, and a little far away. I want to be able to uh, uh, convey, you know, we, we want to make sure that people can express themselves, but uh, have their opinions heard. Um, and uh, really, we are here to listen. You all are here to listen. And uh, we need to um, re recognizing how many people are here uh, and what we're here for, uh, really want to make sure that um, we we can that or we would like to ask you to um, make sure to participate respectfully. So that's about it. I, I think we will move into uh, into our presentation right now, and you know we'll we will answer factual questions that people put in the chat uh such as uh but you know we are not planning to answer the to you know have a back and forth dialogue this evening there's just too many of you on it and i'll and we'll and i'll put i'll put responses in the chat um to the factual questions Thanks, Sarah. And then I just, you know, the, we'll continue to say this as well, but um, I'm always available to answer any questions, to have any conversations outside of our meetings. This is this is a large portion of my my work right now, and I'm happy to further discuss anything or answer any any specific questions as we um, continue through this process. Uh, as Sarah noted, we do have some ground rules tonight. Just want to convey that, um, yeah, we have. We have 168 people in attendance right now. Um, so we're hoping that you can limit your comments to maybe a minute, two at the most. We'll have um, Fernando here tonight with us from Supervisor Radoni's office uh, function as our timer. And um, we'll let you know when, when you're running out of time. Um, you can always also submit written comments to us. Um, we'll put our, our contact information in the, um, in the chat continuously throughout the night. Um, if there is time for if for some reason that um, not everybody here wants to speak tonight and there is time, we will allow people to speak again. But again, we wanna be cognizant of our, our time tonight. Um, feel free to use the chat. As Sarah noted, she'll be responding to any factual um, questions that are raised or comments that are, that are put out there and try and address that in real time. And again, this is a time for us to listen. Um, so recognize that we not, may not be able to respond to all comments and questions raised. And at the end of the meeting, we'll identify any follow-up actions if needed. Those are our overall our goals for the meeting is just to kind of reintroduce the short-term rental moratorium and the steps that have got us to where we are today to receive comments on the short-term rental moratorium and to share next steps for the short-term rental ordinance update, which is a little bit separate from the, the moratorium conversation we're having. Um, just so that you're all aware, this is the Measure W tax rate area in orange. This is the area that is currently subject to the moratorium in West Marin. Um, so uh, no new licenses in this area will be it can be issued for the um, for to operate short-term rentals uh, for the next year and a half at this point. So May 2020, May 23, 2024 is when the moratorium ends. And this is just some um, background information um, about the short-term rental and the moratorium in general. 
Uh, the Marin County Board of Supervisors first adopted short-term rental regulations in 2018. Um, at this time, it established certain operating requirements, um, such as good neighbor policies, and reinforced the longstanding requirement to obtain a transient occupancy tax certificate and a business license to operate your short-term rentals. Uh, so around the same time that this ordinance went into effect, uh, the West Marin voters approved a 4% transient occupancy tax increase uh, known as Measure W. Uh, this increased the TOT in West Marin to 14%. Half of this uh, fund, the funds from the TOT, so 2% is allocated to fire and emergency services, while the other half is allocated for community housing. Uh, and that has kind of been the, the framework under which we have been operating short-term rentals until May of 2022, uh, when the Board of Supervisors adopted a 45-day moratorium um, to address short-term rentals with the understanding that they could be impacting housing supply, community workforce, and public safety, um, given the fact that it's hard to staff uh, fire departments, emergency responders out there. Um, the board extended this moratorium for up to two years on June 21st, 2022. Um, prior to this moratorium going into effect, um, staff attempted to uh, do as much outreach as possible, uh, given the short amount of time we, we had to actually uh, implement this, this moratorium. Um, Advertisements were placed in the Marin IJ to comply with legal requirements from the state. Additionally, there were stories in the IJ, uh, Point Reyes Light, San Francisco Chronicle, and KQED. We had a press release that announced the moratorium. Uh, Sarah Jones, our fearless leader, went on KWMR and KQED to, to try and convey uh, that message over the radio. And uh, we also sent out notifications to uh, business license uh, uh, and short-term rental opera, uh, business license holders, pardon me, to operate uh, rentals in the county. Um, currently, there are over 600 residential short-term rentals that can legally operate in West Marin. So it's a differently, currently over 600 uh, properties have the required licenses to operate short-term rentals. So we're still um, providing a, a number of short-term rentals out in West Marin while we continue to work on the short-term rental ordinance update. I wanted to pass um, the mic over to the Department of Finance real quick so that they can also uh, give you a high-level uh, summary of what their involvement in this short-term rental ordinance is as they play a large role in the issuing of um, a business licenses and TOTs, certificates. Thank you, so Sandy. Kathleen. Yeah. Please, thank you. Um, so my name is Sandra Kacharos. I'm the Assistant Director of Finance. Um, the Finance Department serves as the tax collector for the county. Um, before, you know, I just really wanted to start by recognizing that this is a really dynamic issue. You know, we all understand that. And I um, also wanted to acknowledge and, and really appreciate your participation, all of you, because I think that's how we um, we find our way to you know a, um, a good solution long term. And so, thank you uh, sincerely. Um, I wanted to just break down um, a couple of things and provide some clarity around roles. Um, the Department of Finance is charged with um, implementing the transient occupancy tax ordinance and the business license tax ordinance. Whereas the community development department or agency is focused on the short-term rental ordinances. Um, and so let me just kind of um, start with transient occupancy tax. This is a longstanding um, regulation in Marin, Marin County adopted um, back in 1966. So nearing 60 years, this has been the law of the land. Um, it does require operators to um, have a certificate of registration and uh, report monthly tax returns um, in order to remain a current, in a current operator status. Um, those that use exclusively online platforms are not exempt um, from the requirements. And so that, that is an important um, point to make. Um, the business license uh, tax ordinance has an overlay because those that operate short-term rentals need to have a business license. And that ordinance was adopted back in 1992. 
Um, it is required for all rentals, uh, long-term and short-term, and it is an annual renewal. Um, one of the interesting pieces, I think, uh, the interplay between those two particular ordinances is that the business license tax ordinance has a confidentiality clause embedded in it, and therefore there is some limits around what um, information we can publish, uh, provide to the public at um, the operator level, for example. So um, when we provide information, we generally will summarize it so that we get more um, you know, categories, um, trends, and things of that nature. It's not an in intentionally meant to be, um, you know, withhold information, but it's really a restriction that is inherent in the regulations. And it's, you know, for good reason. Um, so again, I, I just to reiterate, the short-term rental ordinances really are in the community development agency realm. We certainly play a part and support um, their uh, development of those ordinances, but they are those ordinances are intended to address community impacts, land use, public safety, and, and environment, environment, and so forth. Um, we do play a part in the the current piece of um, regulation that's on the books, which is the sh a notice of short-term rentals. Um, also termed the good neighbor policy, where um, exterior signage or written notification to neighbors um, within 300 feet is, is necessary. Um, let's see, the next slide, would you please? Thanks. Um, I know when the moratorium was announced, um, there, you know, we didn't have a lot of time, uh, you know, the public nor the, um, the agencies, we were coming um, out of the COVID um, experience. Um, so I just wanted to share with you um, some of the actions that the tax collector's office took to ensure that we were getting the word out that there was a limited time to register for um, a TOT certificate and a business license for short-term operators before that moratorium took effect. Um, and, and to that point, we um, notified um, approximately 1,200 short-term rental operators through the mail email, press releases, and uh, actually direct telephone calls. We, um, that group included current registered and licensed operators of long and short-term rentals. Um, it encompassed delinquent registered and licensed operators. So those that were already registered and licensed, but who had not recently reported uh, TOT tax. Um, we reached out to what the identifiable non-compliant operators, these are ones that um, we, we see advertising and renting through the online platform um, space, but who are not registered or um, filing monthly with the, um, the tax collector. And then we also took another um, pass at expired business license, licenses for uh, rental operators, just to make sure we were casting the broadest net possible in terms of the universe that would need to know about this um, moratorium. Um, the outcomes of that outreach um, was a real spike in enrollments between May 5th when the um, announcement was made and May 24th when the moratorium took effect. Um, through that, um, there was 152 new business licenses issued and 144 um, transient occupancy tax certificates, um, a majority, as you can appreciate, um, arising from the West Marin area. Um, I also just wanted to um, remind everybody that the um, Department of Finance um, Central Collections Office has a very um, robust website where a plethora of information about about um, TOT and business license is available. So I, I um, recommend those sites if you need more information. And beyond that, I think I'll um, turn it back over to Kathleen and um, we'll, we'll move ahead. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, because this uh, meeting is mostly focused on the um, moratorium. I uh, wanted to just summarize uh, feedback that we've received uh, related to the moratorium to date. Uh, we've received a lot of public feedback during the last few months. We hosted five um, short-term rental learning sessions. I see some familiar names and faces and commenters, um, and I, I want you to to really let you know that we we heard you 
Um, and here's a summary of some of the things we've heard. We're not done, we're just starting this work. So you're, there, you're going to continue to hear from us. There's going to continue to be opportunities for you to reach out with us. Um, but just so far, um, the support side, so those who are in favor of the short-term rental moratorium feel that um, short-term rentals um, adversely impact available housing for community members, especially for long-term renters. Um, they advance, uh, adversely impact uh, residential communities and that the community has a, a lack of balance with long-term uh, occupants versus the, the visitors um, and that um, short-term rentals impact the local workforce. Um, those who are against the moratorium um, and would rather there be uh, uh, no limitation on short-term rentals at the moment, uh, feel like short-term rentals allow people to uh, own or stay in their homes. Uh, they provide economic benefits to the county um, through the TOT that we, we discussed. They support the local economy. They employ local service providers. Um, they don't impact a lot of communities out in West Marin, according to uh, people who have attended our, our meetings and provided comments, because they're already largely concentrated in areas that are vacation serving destinations or second home communities. Uh, and then additionally, they provide access to West Marin. Uh, West Marin is a beautiful place. We have parks, beaches, trails, there's oysters, agriculture. It's a really beautiful, wonderful place. And people um, can visit and are uh, provided affordable um, access when using short-term rentals. Uh, again, more than welcome to continue to uh, share any feedback with us, uh, but these are just kind of the high level summary. Oh. And um, I saw some people saying like, what are we gonna do about next steps? And so um, just wanted to convey again that the moratorium will expire in May 20. 2024, or it will be lifted when new short-term rental regulations are adopted by the board and approved by the Coastal Commission. Um, so we really want to kind of, after this meeting, focus more on that short-term rental ordinance update and how we can engage with you all through that process with targeted stakeholder engagement. At our previous meetings, we've provided a list of folks that we've identified as stakeholders, and we want to continue to discuss any um, changes to our ordinance with you. Um, and then we um, will find other manners to uh, seek feedback. We can do surveys, we can host additional meetings. We're really, really, we're open to suggestions at this point. Um, and we want to really get to the point where we're considering uh, regulations, not just um, whether the moratorium is, is good or bad, but really like what, how does a short-term rental state get formed, pardon me. Um, and these can include operating requirements, emergency preparedness, um, and enforcement. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of subjects and topics on the table uh, for consideration at this time. But now we want to get to the questions and comments part, really more comments, please focus. Uh, this is, I should have fixed this slide. Um, this is really more a time for you to provide comments. Um, so if you could do that, um, raise your hand to do so and I will call on you in the order that the hands are raised. Thanks. Oh yeah, Sarah. Sarah, you're muted. Okay, great. <laughs> Kathleen wasn't letting me unmute myself. So, you know, I, I'm going to have to talk to her about that. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, this website that, that is set up, we have a lot more information to put on it. I, we, I have been juggling a lot of things uh, and haven't I haven't been able to finalize the information to get up onto there yet. So when you go there, uh, there is some, but uh, not, uh, you know, not all of the feedback that we got in the first round. Uh, so that's going to be coming. I just wanted to make sure to get that out there so that people didn't look and say, why did you not put our feedback up? Just wanted to let you know. Thanks. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that we can all see each other and we will um, 
we'll get the conversation going. So the first hand that I see up is uh, Roger Ravenstead, Ravenstead, pardon me. Um, please unmute and share your thoughts with us. Great, thank you, Sarah and Kathleen. Thank you for the presentation um, and Sandra too for the financial background. I can see we've done a lot of work on this. Um, I've written a letter to you and the supervisors, and I've also watched recordings of your other meetings. So I just had four points I want to make tonight. Um, one is I am a Dillon Beach short-term rental owner, um, and I do not believe that Dillon Beach can contribute to affordable housing. I recognize affordable housing is a serious problem for Marin County and many other counties, but I also believe that that is a single family home, traditional single family home issue or multifamily home issue. It's not a vacation rental neighborhood issue. And so um, my first point is that I believe that Dillon Beach should be excluded from the future ordinance. The second point I'd like to make is that Dillon Beach has always been a vacation rental kind of place or at least a vacation place. And by taking short-term rentals out of there, you're reducing access for people who want to come and visit the ocean, stay at a house for a weekend, enjoy the coastline, enjoy Dillon Beach, enjoy everything it has to offer. Those people will be excluded and only rich people will be able to live in those houses and go to their houses on occasion. Those people who want to visit won't have a place to stay. Um, I'd like to mention that Dillon Beach has a uh, homeowners association that is very active and very strong. Um, they are, uh, they have good rules in place. You're not allowed to have more than 12 people in a house at any time, even if you're an owner living there yourself. 20 seconds left. All right. And then also they have on-site security enforcing those rules. And lastly, water. Water is not an issue. It has never been a crisis at Dillon Beach other than what we're dealing with throughout all of California. And uh, short-term rentals do not use more water than a single family home that has permanent residence in it full time. And those are my four points. Thank you. Uh, next we have Cynthia Scloven. Hi there, uh, Cynthia Scovlin. Uh, thanks for having this meeting. Um, uh, I have a mushroom farm here in Point Reyes, Dream Farm Mushrooms, and um, I myself am also a renter. And I, I just want to say first off that a lot of the chat I see back and forth, and I think a lot of the positions on this issue take on a very us versus them character, which I find unfortunate. Um, I think we're all here, uh, second homeowners, full-time locals and tourists because we love this place. And where you have love, magic can happen. I think the potential, this place is already amazing. It has oysters, it has organic food, it has organic sauerkraut, it has cheese, it has ice cream, it has amazing things. And all of these things are provided by locals who work here who own businesses here and make it happen. So when the tourists are coming and when the second homeowners are coming to enjoy this amazing place, it's because local producers and local artists and artisans and potters and poets who live here full time are making this place what it is. That's why tourists are coming. That's why vacation renters are renting. So we need to balance the community and we need to make this place work together. We take this lesson from mushrooms, from mycelium. We are all interconnected. There's no such thing as one person just in it for themselves. That person dies. 20 that seconds left. Um, I was before this, I was an urban planner with the Presidio. And part of the whole point of the GGNRA, the Golden Gate National Recreation Area, is to keep revenues local to keep places healthy. We need to take a clue from that. The whole point of short-term rentals being a problem is that money leaves the community. Two minutes are over. Thank you. We need to keep the community economically healthy. Thank you very much. Thanks, Cynthia. And I don't know about you, but your comments made me a little hungry. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> next we've got uh, Scott Brooms. You can unmute you. Hello, and, and uh, thank you all for organizing and hosting this. Um, 
Cynthia, that was really cool. Great way to wrap that all around to uh, to the magical world of uh, healthy, good mushrooms. Um, I am curious um, if if either Kathleen or Sarah can answer for so many people with for so many dozens of conversations that have been had in there. If you read the chat right now, can you remind everybody why exactly or what exact problem or what exact balance? the county is trying to solve by imposing short-term moratoriums, which I heard earlier in this conversation, are seem like they're destined to become long-term regulations by the government. What, what problem is trying to be solved? Uh, so I will, we'll pause your time there, Scott, and I, I will I say, you know, good reminder, I, that was how we introduced the discussions in the earlier meetings, and uh, it's worth reiterating, I, you know, we, I, we, had, uh, we had known uh, for a long time, even when the initial short-term rental regulations went into place that were about good neighbor policies, uh, the uh, short-term rentals uh, and how they affected the availability and the price of housing I, were, was also something that we needed to understand and look into I, with, um, you know, kind of two, two fronts of why now. One of them was that we are engaged in a lot of housing planning in the county. Uh, one of the programs that we are, you know, basically that we have included in our housing plan, which was just adopted by the Board of Supervisors last night, and is something that we've gotten direction from the state to look at and for every community to look at is what's the role of short-term rentals in your housing supply uh, because we need to look at all of the all of the challenges to housing that are happening and the other uh, the other reason for you know recommending the moratorium at this time was we were hearing a lot of feedback and concerns from residents and from uh, housing groups and service groups and uh, and public services uh, in communities in West Marin about uh, the increase in short-term rentals. In these very small communities, uh, even a small increase can make a big difference uh, in terms of what it does to the housing supply. And so I, you know, kind of got a lot of uh, a lot of message that uh, something needed to be done uh, around the situation. And we felt we really needed to stabilize the situation and get that baseline of the current short-term rentals uh, in order to effectively figure out what to do next. And so that is why we uh, recommended to the board uh, that there be a moratorium at this point in time. Okay. Uh, thank you. That was a tremendous amount of information. Um, and so from uh, other stuff in the chat, I guess one thing is, um, can we have some kind of a commitment that all the questions, because this is such a massive attendance, can we have some kind of a commitment that all the questions in the chat are going to get answered somewhere on the county's short-term rental website? And also that the playback is going to be universally acceptable so whoever wants to go access it can see everything. I think this is an important part of the public record and I, I I have to admit I haven't been back on the website. I don't know what's there but this seems like with so many stakeholders and so much at stake it has to be put up there for people to access and this chat is the only way that everyone on this call are, is going to get to answer ask, ask a bunch of questions. That's a question if you could just put that on the record. I guess I'll, I'll, I'm sure that uh, uh, Mr. Barreto is going to give me a time up here in a Ten second. Ten seconds left. Yep. So my question is, is are we all wasting our time? Is this a foregone conclusion that our government leaders have made up their mind on this and they're just trying to window dress this and make it look like there's a open forum? Or is this truly going to receive a collaborative stakeholder um, uh, go around here? Thank you. There's, we're not intending to, I'll, I'll say this on the record, we are not intending to change, uh, we're not intending within this two year period 
to make changes to the moratorium. Uh, what we are, uh, but we are intending to consider what future regulations should be with a very open mind. We have a, uh, you know, we are not, we see a lot of issues around short-term rentals. We uh, have gotten very clear direction and statement um, from our board that they want to see short-term rentals continue as a use in Marin. Uh, and, you know, it is, it is very much an open question how best to make that happen. All right, thanks, Scott. Uh, next, first it's Chris H. Chris H, you can um, unmute. All right, maybe we'll go back to Chris H in a, in a moment. Um, how, Randy, Randy, you're next. Great, thanks. Um, I just want to say that um, Dillon Beach is a completely different animal from what you're facing with the rest of the county. We manage vacation rentals in Dillon Beach. We own a vacation rental in Dillon Beach. We have for the last 10 years. And um, Dillon Beach has always been a vacation destination it, it, from its conception in the, over 100 years ago. Dillon Beach should not be included in this moratorium. What you're doing is causing serious harm to people. I'm also a realtor. One of my clients just put his lot on the market. It's a listing right now in Dillon Beach that came on because he's so disgusted and frustrated with dealing with Marin County to get his property built after two years. Now this moratorium has completely changed their retirement options. They're now selling the lot and they've given up. Other people uh, have bought lots, have begun construction, and now they don't know what they can do and how to pay for it. You, you made this decision for whatever reasons, but Dillon Beach is different. I really feel that Dillon Beach needs to be separated from this decision and the moratorium needs to be released as soon as possible. I know you've already said you wouldn't do that. Two years sounds extremely extreme to put people in this position. Our 20 entire, seconds left. Our entire retirement plan is based on selling this incredible vacation rental as a business. Without that, we've lost 50% of the value and many other people have too. Please consider releasing this in Dillon Beach. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Um, and I do see that Chris is back right before Chris uh, on mute. I did just want to say that we have heard um, from a lot of folks that Dillon Beach is different and that it does have a larger second home uh, like number, pardon me, percentage of about uh, over 30% of the existing housing stock in Dillon Beach is uh, in short-term rental. Um, and so if you are speaking and have some comments that are a little bit different from that, please go ahead and share them. But we, we have heard a lot of feedback uh, already about Dillon Beach and Stinson to that point uh, being different types of vacation communities and should be considered differently as we do this uh, work to update the ordinance. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Chris, go ahead. Hi, sorry, I had to step away from work. Thank you very much for taking no my worries. question. Uh, I acknowledge everyone here is facing a hard problem as everyone has good intent. Uh, I'm a lifelong West Marin resident and recently joined the Point Ray Station Village Association as vice president. Uh, well, I don't speak on behalf of the group tonight. I know many, many locals in town. And the thing we are all worried about is a change of character in the town. And I think what's going on is very much tied to the housing element. And we have a problem if there are more short-term rentals that puts more pressure on more building that then puts pressure to do things like high density in our small rural communities, which everyone go to because they specifically are small and rural. So there is a bit of a snowball effect at risk. And I know that many people my, such as myself who are fortunate enough to own properties in the area 
it's very tempting for us to put our housing units up for short-term rentals. We'd make a bunch more money, but it's really challenging for the community. Uh, I'm personally very so supportive of the moratorium, uh, and I would hope that uh, perhaps there's some way for people who are in flight on a building to be allowed to convert to short-term rentals. But if the county doesn't do something that stops what will be a snowball effect, the 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 character of the local communities could change forever. And I I do I know I speak for many locals that we hope that even beyond the two years, there are very strong restrictions about uh, how short-term rentals can be put on the market. And we appreciate the uh, difficult challenge that the county's in and the various competing interests. So thank you very much. All right, thanks, Chris. Next is Caroline Dutton. Yes, um, so uh, can you hear me? Am I? Yes, yeah. Okay, we good. Can hear you. Um, yes, I really appreciate that you've put up this forum so that we can give our opinions. And I also am very glad that the moratorium is in place because uh, it has been getting out of hand, the lack of, of housing for local people and for people who work here. Um, I've had, I mean, I inherited this house from my parents. I've been coming here since I was a teenager. Um, it is a second home for me, but I'm here about half the time. And um, sometimes I rent it. Um, when I'm out of town or when I'm not here, but but my concern, I, I have also rented it to people who, um, you know, grew up here and cannot find a place to live. And so I've rented for several months to somebody who finally did find a place uh, and also to a single mom friend who got evicted because the place next door got sold and um, at an affordable rate. And you know, long term, but they're friends so that I was able to come here. But I guess my, I, I don't think Dillon Beach is different. I think that, that the moratorium is good so that we can, there's time to think about things before they get too out of hand. But I think that, <laughs> and I think that many people who bought houses recently have mortgages to pay and they might need to rent them when they're not there. But I do 20 think, seconds left. Oh, I do think that people who invest in property only to be making a profit or profit and are never planning to live here and only do short term rentals should not be allowed to do it. I think that should be one of San Francisco has a, a good law that allows you to rent your property short term for two minutes or over. Days. Is that it? 90 days a year. And and that seems to work. Thanks, Caroline. Uh, next, we have Ashley Eagle Gibbs. Great, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, great. Good Thanks. evening. Um, thank you, Ms. Jones and Ms. Kilgariff and uh, to county staff for the presentation and organizing this public meeting tonight. My name is Ashley Eagle Gibbs and I'm the legal and policy director with the Environmental Action Committee of West Marin based in Point Reyes Station. Established in 1971, our mission is to protect and sustain the unique lands, waters, and biodiversity of West Marin. We have been fully engaged in the county's housing and safety element update, um, which Ms. Jones stated the board just approved last night. And we have also been consistent participants in Marin County's local coastal program update and other county planning efforts. Addressing short-term rental concerns is a critical part of coastal planning to protect our residential housing and unincorporated Marin. We have seen a dramatic increase in short-term rentals in West Marin, as has been stated today. And while we fairly, fully support coastal access and visitor serving uses consistent with the Coastal Act, we also acknowledge the need to maintain our residential community. Regulating short-term rentals is a critical component of planning for Marin's housing needs and preserving our residential communities. To reduce greenhouse gas emissions and preserve our local communities, um, it's also important that people are able to live and work in West Marin. Safety concerns are also raised when there is a shortage of essential worker housing, and as our residential communities shrink, um, we lose access to these public services and the school programs. So we fully support the short-term rental moratorium, and we do look forward to working with the county staff on a permanent ordinance. Um, I agree with what uh, Cynthia mentioned um, regarding balance. So I want to say that we need to strike a balance between visitor serving while also preserving our residential communities. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, next, we have Matthew Solda. Hey, everybody. Um, 
Uh, Mike, I'd like to find out from Tara, um, the uh, moratorium has been in effect for almost a year. What has been the effect of uh, workforce housing, you know, rental units available in West Marin? We're going to not, uh, we're at like, uh, I, uh, we can give, uh, you know, we can follow up on your question where I don't have the answer to that right now. Uh, that's not what we're, uh, that, that do, do you know wasn't part the of the answer? prep for you, today. No, I, I, we, uh, you know, we don't so, know, so but, I, but anyway, I, please, please go on with your comments. You're going to release regulations in the spring, but you don't know the effect that the moratorium has had. Uh, my concern is that we're basing this on opinions and not facts. We don't know the effect that these regulations have on housing. We don't know the effect that they have on economic opportunities for people who get employment from maintaining these houses. Uh, like a previous person said, this all is a balance. Uh, you know, you, you, having houses doesn't help if there's no jobs. And this is a huge part of the economy. And my fear is that this is going to be made uh, just based on opinions and that um, short-term rentals are a boogeyman that it's really easy to blame the housing for, but there's a ton of factors and I don't see any quantitative or really uh, attempts to know what the effects of these things are. Um, uh, I have a rental home in Bolinas. I spend as much time there as I can, but I also you know, you have, it also is, is part of my livelihood. And I'll tell you, the town of Bolinas is dying. People, like, like there's not enough kids in the school. And it's not because there's not enough houses. It's because there's not infrastructure to build houses. And it's because there's not economic opportunity there. The county is neglecting the infrastructure in Bolinas. The roads are crumbling. Um, 20 you know, seconds Ocean left. Boulevard, Ocean Boulevard crumbled a few years ago and the county did nothing. Uh, Wharf Road is crumbling and the county's doing nothing. There's been nothing invested in the water infrastructure. That's why. <laughs> that's why there's no housing. It, you know, you can't build. Um, and I think, I, and I would love for the county to look at this holistically and not use. Uh, you know, the leaders make... are over. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. We or Matthew, you're pardon me, not to just give you a nickname. Um, the next speaker is Esther Martino. Hi, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. I absolutely agree with the former speaker. I think he was on point many times. I do, uh, I live out in Inverness part time. And the one thing that I want to point out is that I employ uh, a local family and they are, you know, and my short term rental gives them job opportunities and income. And I think, you know, without that income, it would be very difficult for them. And also my, uh, my housing is affordable and the people who visit love it and they spend a lot of money in the community. And there's very little uh, lodging out there. Also, Marin County and that should be part of the problem solving of this issue. And and I think it's obviously it's very complicated, but thank you. Sorry, Esther, um you you kind of broke up right when you said this would be a good way to address it. Can you just can you um, repeat that real quick? Oh, okay. I'm going through a tunnel on the Bay Bridge. Oh, okay. Um, I just, uh, I just think that it's a very complicated issue. But did you hear the part that I said that my short-term rental really provides job up, like employment yeah, to the yeah. local community? Mm -hmm. And these yeah, are people that, that these are people that live on the local ranches, and you know they speak very little English. Get a job really anywhere else? They're incredibly fabulous people and i would i would hate to say to them i'm sorry i have no more work for you it would really break my heart it would be devastating okay thank um, you so okay you're welcome yeah i appreciate that yeah. um i'm also seeing that like the chat is getting very targeted and i want to remind people that we 
agreed to ground rules that we were going to be respectful and um, I, getting very specific, asking where people live, asking, they're putting links to their rentals on the chat. Like, please don't do that. We're here to just have like a respectful conversation. So um, please continue to keep it that way. Thanks. And and just we, you know, if, if we can't stay respectful, we're going to need to end the meeting. We we don't want to create a space where people are targeting each other. Thanks. Um, next, I've got David Foudman. Great. Uh, thanks for that last comment. I, I appreciate that about people being respectful. And I asked, even though I have a different point of view than a lot of people here, I, I appreciate hearing them. Um, this is a quick Dillon Beach. I'm not going to pitch Dillon Beach, but my wife and I own a short-term rental. We go there very often. Of course, we spend money when we're there. But here's some interesting, I'll call it facts, back of the envelope, if you will, or back of the uh, napkin. Uh, there may be 30% of the homes in Dillon Beach are short-term rentals, but 90% of the people aren't there during the week. Um, I did a drive around last couple of times, and you can count the number of lights on and lights off. And about eight to nine percent of the homes have people in it. I'm assuming midweek, maybe they're 50 50 renters or, or owner occupiers of sorts. And so if you limit, get rid of short term rentals, nothing's going to happen. You're not going to have any more people in the homes. The only thing that's going to happen is the house cleaners and such who live locally aren't going to be employed. The restaurants aren't going to have business on the weekends. And uh, it, it won't improve anything. It will just reduce. Uh, local business income and make the place even more desolate. When you have less than 10% of the people there during the week, homes occupied, uh, thank God for short-term rentals. At least there's somebody there doing something. So um, that's that's my, my main point about Dillon Beach. Thanks. Welcome. Okay, next we've got Meg. Thank you. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know, I'm a, uh, everyone to know, I'm a multi-generational and long-term resident uh, and employer in West Marin. Last year, I contributed over $100,000 to TOT taxes. In 2000, the census stated that there were 40% unoccupied houses in West Marin, not short-term rentals. Um, I've worked as an executive director at a nonprofit and have served on several nonprofit boards. I donate and support all local to all local causes. I employ, employ all local trades, cleaners, services, and I recommend my guests to local businesses and restaurants. Our local group, our local group, which we've established um, in response to this moratorium, is strong. We look out for each other. West Marin is strong and organized and has been. We support the TOT and community of needs above and beyond. I agree with David of Dillon Beach and you can be part of our team. That's it. Okay, great. Thanks so much. And look forward to continuing to talk with you. Um, next, I've got Heather. Hi. Um, our situation is we're in our 50s. We've just bought our first home. We've saved diligently to, to do this. It's a stretch. Um, we're the sandwich generation. We have um, small kids that uh, are God kids that we're co-raising. We have two moms in our 80s that we live far away that we need to fly to help take care of. Um, we also have two step parents in their 70s. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to make this all work and help our family members. And, um, you know, the only house we could afford was one that's in very bad shape. This is, this is a real financial stretch for us. And it would make a huge difference to us if we could rent out our house while we're traveling to see our parents. Um, we've been renters uh, for a very long time, and we both are in favor of there being more housing for renters. Um, and in our situation, there's that that is not a long-term rental situation because we're going to be living in the house. We're just looking for a way to be able to 
live in Marin and afford it and not go bankrupt while we're also taking care of our family and our godkids. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Jacqueline. Will you, will you tell me how to pronounce your last name? Oh gosh, it's such a long name. It's Hilger Rolf. Hilger Rolf. Okay, so yeah. I'm Kilger Kilger Rolf. So <laughs> Hilger Rolf. Sorry, it's Kilger. My, no, my first name is very long too, so apologize. Um, okay. Anyway, um, thanks, Kathleen and Sarah, for continuing this opportunity to provide feedback uh, on this topic. I just wanted to bring up and kind of echo uh, what everyone else had said. And I am an owner at Dillon Beach, in the middle of building a home. And what I'd like to um, plead to this committee is, I know you did a lot of outreach to try and get the word out to apply for, you know, the permits to get TOT, et cetera. However, you didn't consider the, the people like myself who are in the middle of stages of building. So we were unable to apply for a permit because Marin County hasn't signed off on our building yet, you know, our new, our home. And um, we were building with the intent of renting it out part-time, planning on being there, you know, 60% of the time and renting it out when we're, you know, traveling and doing other things like other people. Um, but what I'd like to please, could you consider grandfathering those that were in the middle of the building phase um, when May of 2024 comes up um, to allow us the opportunity to apply when we were unable to, even though I did and I was denied because I wasn't officially an address yet, even though I owned the land and I, my 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 building was in process. Does that make sense? It does. We we can't commit to changing the ordinance at this time, and and we have not received any direction from the Board of Supervisors to do that, uh, but we are taking your um, comments and we will um, share yeah. that with, with everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and I saw that um, somebody asked if we would be continuing past seven o'clock. Um, we did note in the agenda that if more than the people, what am I saying? That if people, more than the amount of time was used for public comments and we would extend it. So we're, we're committing to staying here to hear everybody speak. Um, we're also recording this meeting. So if you do Good have to job. leave, um, I can share uh, a link to record of this recording. You know, the whole thing is kind of... uh, next is uh, Dory Rivers. Uh, you have David Rivers, we're husband and wife. <laughs> Oh, okay, Hi. thanks. Um, so um, I'm calling regarding Dillon Beach. Uh, we have a, a cute cottage in the village there. And um, I certainly uh, resonate with the last five speakers that have spoken. Um, I, I suppose I have a question because I don't understand the numbers that, you know, that people are making a, a, a lot of money over short-term rental. I I just don't think that's reality. Um, uh, and also, I also wanted to resonate with... Um, people that spoke about retirement and part of their, their plan. My wife is about to uh, retire and it's, and it's drastic. We have to pull from all of our resources to offset her not working anymore. And a short-term rental would be helpful in that. Um, it might, you know, maybe pay a portion towards the mortgage, but it's not going to make us a profit. Um, and so if we can't rent it, we're not going to rent it to somebody who's going to tie it up because what would the point be in having it? So, I think you would create a desert out there if you if you went forward with this, and I I hope you uh, respect my position. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, David Kimball. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Um, I'm David Kimball, and I have lived in Bolinas for 34 years. Have been visiting here for over 50 years. Um, and I am glad that the county put a pause on more short-term rentals so that we can get our arms around this. Um, the highest and best use of properties is not limited to financial return on investment. In fact, I think it could be said that building a vibrant and well-functioning community, one that has housing and it's affordable, uh, is a higher and best use 
uh, of, of properties. Now, it doesn't, we shouldn't be denying people the opportunity to build wealth through their real estate investments, but the degree to which it's, it's gone at this point where there are corporations and investors who don't have a commitment to community, um, we have to find a way to find a balance so that we allow short-term rentals in a format that builds community and we don't have short-term rentals in a format that ignores community. For all of the stories about people that are building retirements and so forth, I can cite to you how many people have grown up in this town that A, can't afford to move back here, or B, have had to leave because their properties have been converted to short-term rentals. So I'm, I'm very much in favor that the Board of Supervisors put a pause on this so we can get our arms around this. Um, and it's true that we do need to find um, uh, more data and more analysis. 20 seconds left. Heard. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, David. Next is Steve. Hi, thank you. Um, I appreciate David's comments. I think they're very right on to the idea of maintaining and preserving community. My own per, uh, perception of this whole issue and involvement in it is very complicated because I am somebody who's a longtime owner in Point Race Station, and we have applied or we applied before the moratorium to be short-term rental proprietors. We actually have not yet used that uh, option for our retirement, which in our case, that's what it will do. But it's clear to me from reading some of the uh, data that was issued by the county, especially that identified the income on some of the red short-term rentals in all of West Marin, it was really shocking to see the extreme income inequality in those numbers. Uh, there are some units that are producing income that's equivalent to a commercial property. So one question I have is how does the planning department um, just adjudicate that with the zoning that is by and large residential and or agricultural. Uh, is it a cottage industry or is it, it seems like it's not a residential use if it's, not, it's, if it's entirely income producing, uh, especially with regard to second uh, home owners. So anyway, the, I, I think just those two, those extremes from somebody who's, uh, able to rent a short-term rental, but only wants to on a very short-term basis to also use the property, as somebody else mentioned earlier, um, or even uh, as the one example was maybe just once or twice a year to rent it out. That's a different class or category of- 20 owners. seconds but, left. And if, we, if the county focused on those categories of owners, I think it's important to, uh, to pay respects to people who are locally long-term owners, owner occupiers who are providing short-term rental. But also I think it's important to have a category that also provide an additional unit Thumbs up, Steve. on their site. All right. Thank you. Um, next is Jen. Oh, hi. Thanks everyone. Thanks for allowing me to speak. Um, I've heard some really great comments. I am a short-term owner out in Dillon Beach. Um, I'll try not to repeat a lot of the points that were made, but I think someone touched upon something that was important. A lot of the homeowners in Dillon Beach have to report to the HOA, and it's a pretty stringent HOA, and rightfully so, to protect the peace in the community. Uh, things as I have a maximum occupancy of 12 people, I cannot have people park on the street, there's noise ordinances, there's an HOA patrol that's making sure that no other neighbor is disturbed or I get fined. Um, so Dillon Beach, I feel kind of has the lock on the peace of the community. Um, when we talk about um, uh, making money and stuff, I wanted to know if the County of Marin is doing their due diligence in keeping track of how much money you're actually making on the short-term rentals. Um, because it's not affordable housing out there. My property taxes alone are 24,000 or 12,000 a year. And each month, you know, my tra transient occupancy taxes are over, well over a thousand. So if you're getting over 12 to you know, 20,000 from me, I can't imagine what you're getting from 
the rest of the community in Dillon. And I've seen places like South Lake Tahoe where they've imposed moratoriums and then they realize, oh shoot, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot and now we don't get all this income that we were expecting to have as a county where we can- 20 seconds left. So I think um, keeping the peace of the community is important. I think Dylan is doing that. And um, you know, use the money that we pay you every month to help with the community and thank you. Thanks. Uh, next is Bill, Bill F or Belif, depending on how you want to say it. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Bill Thanks. F's daughter, Dana, and um, uh, I agree with so many, um, Meg, David, Matthew, David Rivers. I mean, I really do, um, echo what they are saying. Um, I also want to bring up the um, fact that um, we are now also facing uh, Proposition 19 that was voted in in California, which um, uh, causes a big problem for uh, people who are inheriting the homes from their parents. My family goes back um, to Dillon Beach as uh, before the Golden Gate Bridge was built. We've been going up to Dillon Beach, and um, uh, recently, um, we my father passed away, and now our family would love to keep the house at Dillon Beach. And really, we're so we're strapped, and the way we are able to do that is to occasionally rent out the house to pay the property taxes. Well, now that we have to pay increased property taxes through Proposition 19, we may not even be able to keep it. So the whole uh, notion of it's just wealthy and it, it's just, that's just preposterous, it really is. I also wanna say that you can't regulate good neighbors, um, even long-term neighbors are not necessarily good neighbors. And um, I think, and the property values out there are just um, going to continue to go up, which is gonna raise property taxes. 20 seconds left. Affordable housing is not going to happen. So, I mean, that's just kind of a fact right there. And um, it would be nice to get some, some fact, fact, factual based answers from, uh, from you folks at the county. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Timothy Correa. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm a homeowner in, in Stinson, and uh, uh, I wanted to share the following thoughts and ask a couple of questions. First, it seems to me that Stinson Beach is truly a micro economy relative to the rest of the county. It's similar to Dillon Beach, but if the county is contemplating short-term rental restrictions or regulations, that it needs to take into account the truly micro geographic dynamics whether it's relevant to Dillon or Stinson or Mill Valley, that that's critical. Um, there was a, you were asked a question up front, which is, uh, which I, which was, what's, what are we trying to accomplish, right? And 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 um, I know that's, I I think to have an explicit list of what are our goals and to the extent it is a concern about housing, I would then ask number one that you have explicit acts, you have explicit sources of data upon which you make that in those decisions and recommendations, right? So I was on the last Zoom, you were crucified for using air DNA data. I mean, maybe you have better sources of data, but, but we should all see the data that we're making decisions based on. And someone suggested their concerns about regulations being based on opinion. I share that concern. Right. So let's look at the right set. Of, let's look at the appropriate set of data, and then let's agree on the analytics. Right. So to the question, someone said, "What has the twenty the seconds impact, left? What has been the impact of the moratorium to date?" You ought to know because that's been a microcosm and a test scenario. And if you don't, you should you should you should figure it out. And then for the long term, to the extent you're looking at long term regulations, is it polling? Is it sampling? 
have is there actually any housing created by moratoriums on on short term regulations in Stinson? Base it on data and analytics and be explicit. Thank you. Thank you. Next is John. Hey. John Almeida. Maybe he stepped away for a moment, but we will come back to John. Next is Ian McMillan. Mick, yeah, McMillan. Hi, my name's Owen. Um, Owen, sorry. So I guess a couple of points. I have two minutes to it. Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, so a couple of points here. The first is that I read in Point Reyes Light on the weekend that people are asking for more data, and I've heard of that here. I feel like I'm being gaslit. This is Econ 101. We live in a supply constrained market and any housing stock that is taken away from homeowners must create pressure on the cost of living in communities, right? Um, I won't name them. A previous speaker has multiple homes in Bolinas. They don't even live here. No one's ever met them. And that's a really good kind of intro into why I don't think it's a good idea to increase the amount of vacation rentals in our community. Um, I should say I'm a Bolinas homeowner. I live there. I'm part of the community. Vacation renters do bring in tax dollars. Sure. They don't send their kids to our schools. They don't go to our doctors. They don't go to our hardware store. They don't add to our workforce. They don't volunteer at the local park or the food kitchen or the library or anywhere else. They don't even stop and smile and say hello, right? Like I like knowing my neighbors. I don't want to live in a soulless neighborhood full of anonymous transients. It is not the reason any of us moved here. And the other point on the economic front is like the velocity of money is important. When you live in town, you spend your money in town. When you're a vacation renter, you're only spending money in a certain amount of places. I completely hear the need to keep tourism going in our community. I don't see Airbnb and VRBO doing what was intended when I read, you know, Rebels with a Cause has a good line on this, which is humans need space to recreate. When they created Marin County and all of the parkland and all of the ag land, they didn't mean only upper middle class professionals and left. wealthy people. They meant everybody. We can increase the amount of tourism locations in our parkland. We can build hostels like they do in Rodea Beach. There's plenty of places. I think this moratorium is great. I don't think it goes far enough. And frankly, I wish it would go further, especially on multi-homeowners. Thank you. Thanks. I just want to check in and see. John, are you back? Do you want to unmute and share? All right. Uh, next is Eric. Hi. Um, I've, I've been to a number of these Zoom meetings, and I'm a two-year uh, resident of Bolinas. I'm one of the new newbies here. And uh, my partner and I moved here with the idea that we would have a short-term rental. We would convert part of the house into a short-term rental. We didn't catch wind that we had to get the business license in time. And so now we're stuck with trying to rent it on a monthly basis. Uh, that's not practical. It's just, I don't know where that one came from, but that's not practical. No one wants to just, or, or very few people have the money and the time to spend a month in, uh, in, in a location. Um, I appreciate people who have inherited the house um, I happen to not be one of those. Um, when you buy a house, your, your property taxes are just incredibly high here. Um, we moved here knowing that a short-term rental could possibly pay for our property taxes here. We're trying to be retired or semi-retired. It's becoming a really difficult uh, uh, enterprise here for us to even live here. And we, we, we love the coastal life here. But uh, then the other one thing I want to say is we had an experience coming from Napa that we were renting out on a long-term basis part uh, of, of building on our, our property. Uh, a moratorium on evictions came up because of the pandemic. There might be a pandemic every year for the next, you know, 100 years that evictions would be on a moratorium. It was a hardship then. It would be a hardship now. 20 seconds left. I think there should be degrees of if the if the if the house is owner occupied, that should that should allow you to do short term rental short term rentals. Um, I just think this two year moratorium is putting too much of a hardship on some people. Uh, well, thank you. 
Thanks, Eric, and appreciate you coming back and sharing your, your comments with a, a new group. Uh, next is Anna or Anna Gonzalez. Hi, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. Um, I am a house cleaner in Dillon Beach for 18 years. And uh, also I am a head of the group of promotoras in West Marine. Thanks for being a promotora for the past seven years. I have the opportunity to know most of the Hispanic families in all West Marine. And I know most of the families live in ranchers who the husband milk the, the cows, feed the cows and work on the dairies. And the wives work uh, part-time cleaning the vacational rentals in West Marine. And unfortunately, on that job, the men make really, really low income. And if the wives doesn't have the opportunity to continue cleaning those houses, those families will be so affected. I know in West Marine schools, we are most of 60% of students Hispanics. They are ESL learners. And I know those families will be so affected because with the only income, one income, they can survive in West Marine. And it's something that the county has to think about those families, what they will do if they close all the vacational renters and how they will be affected all those families. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, checking in, John. John, you had your hand up. Just want to see. Yeah, if you can you hear me speak. now? Yeah, yeah, we can. Okay, hear you. good. I was on my other computer. Apparently, the microphone doesn't work. So sorry. Uh, I can do that Thanks now. Thanks for making it work. No, this is. Yeah, good. first of all, Go thank ahead. you very much for hosting this, uh, Kathleen and and uh, uh, Sandra and uh, Sarah. I appreciate that to be able to talk. Um, a couple things. I'll try to be as quick as I can, and I mean this with all respect. Um, so I I, I know that. Um, uh, I'm a uh, short-term rental operator owner in uh, Dillon Beach, and I'd be happy if someone wants to give me about $9,000 a month for a permanent renter, I'd be happy to take that. No problem whatsoever. Um, uh, I make pretty good money with the rental, but I also have a lot of overhead. This was a, a, a dream of mine for retirement, uh, and that was the purpose why I bought the house. So I was able to do it later in life. I know some people have lived there a long time. I couldn't do that. I've been going there since I was a kid. But I couldn't afford a house till recently, so that's why I'm in the in the place I am. Um, one of the things that what was brought up about like the impact of uh, short-term rental people and such. Remember that I only have one home, and so whatever people that, like somebody brought up the HOA restrictions, only eight people can be there at a time. That means even if there was a permanent person, they might have eight people or twelve, but I can only have so many. Uh, when I do rent the house, it's less than fifty percent of the time. I stay there about 10 to 20% when I can, like other people do. Um, it's, it's a place that I always wanted to be, but it supplements my income and allows me to afford it by renting it out. And I know that's been stated before. I'm just making that point for me. Um, uh, one of the other things, let's see. Um, we talked about amenities and stuff there too. I know that there's a restaurant down there, which has been closed most of the time. That I've done left. That. Sure. And so we cannot go there. When I have to go to the hardware store, I have to travel about, 20, 30 miles to get there. So um, it's there's not a lot there. There's not a lot of available properties to build on either. Um, also, I employ people there. I think that was brought up by uh, the former uh, just a little bit ago. Employ a couple of people on a part-time basis that helps them you know, make their income. Up, it's John. not an affordable housing there. So thank you. Thanks, John. Next is Martin Rayner. Hello there. Um, thank you for uh, listening to me. Uh, I'd like to say first off that I'm brand new, so I probably don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but as a sort of relatively objective viewer, this is my first uh, encounter with you guys, and, and I'm much appreciated too. But it seems like a very muddy puddle to me. Um, it doesn't seem like there's a structure in place whereby evidence can be gathered uh, and evaluated. Uh, the many factions are shouting that the sky is falling, 
and everybody has a unique, a fairly unique uh, situation for themselves. I'm certainly one of them. I, I think that uh, uh, there are so many different cases to be uh, considered. So in a way, we need a czar who, who can really bring all these matters together and make some sensible, intelligent decisions so that we're not just um, stuck with a bunch of provisions that that don't necessarily fit anybody very well. Um, and so that's just an objective view. And that's really all I want to say, because I just don't know enough at this point. But I do know uh, that, that there's no sharp point to this somehow, if that means anything. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. And I'll extend this to you and anyone else on this call. You're more than welcome to give me a call anytime and we can talk more and fill in the gaps of information or where you want to hear more. Um, Great. Thank you. Happy to talk to any of you here. Um, next is Michael Parman. Uh, hey, hello. Can you hear me or am I having a computer malfunction? Oh, yeah, we can hear you. Great. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that it seems that the moratorium um, at a certain level fundamentally misunderstands the nature of the sharing economy and the hosts who participate in Airbnb um, or otherwise offer short-term housing. Um, most are not deciding between offering long-term lease or to a full-time resident or offering short-term occupancy. Rather, Airbnb allows owners to offer the home to guests while they're not using it. Um, in other words, banning Airbnb does not create a net increase in available long-term housing or affordable housing. Um, as the properties in Airbnb are used by owners and the Airbnb rental slots are times that the owners are not using the housing. Um, so the housing is more efficiently used. Your alternative essentially is to create more hotels in that area, which I don't think is anyone's plan or intention as that you know, has a greater degree of deleterious ecological effect compared to allowing people to efficiently use their housing. The other issue is that Airbnb, by allowing more tourists to the area, creates more economy, creates more jobs, creates more income for people who are actually living in the area. Um, it seems as though when we balance the um, use of unutilized property for Airbnb vacation rentals with its other alternative use of it sitting idle, that it's used for an Airbnb rental. 20 seconds left. The best ecological solution, the best access solution to coastal resources for the community. And it seems as though there is a dynamic where some of the people who seem to be proposing this ban are some of the same people who have supported a lot of the fundamental causes of the lack of affordable housing in West Marin, such as up, huge Michael. amounts of land required to develop a house, a ban on ADUs, very difficulty, in great degrees of difficulty in creating multi-unit housing. Thumbs up, Michael. And progressive bans on affordable housing like trailer parks and RVs. Thanks, yeah. Um, next is Katie, Katie Beacock. Great, thanks so much. I was gonna be quiet tonight, specifically with this crazy voice that I have. Uh, I wanna commend the staff for yesterday's fabulous presentation of the housing element. Couldn't believe you were gonna do this again tonight. So thank you very much for giving us time. I am concerned that Stinson Beach has been highly underrepresented tonight. And I just have to say, I've lived in Marin my whole life. My grandparents used to vacation in Stinson Beach. I want to represent that Stinson Beach has been a vacation community with, with really great care to the local residents. You know, somebody said that people don't say hello, they don't do this, they don't do that. My experience in almost 50 years of doing vacation rentals is that many of our guests, first of all, they may become owners, but they donate to the firemen, they go to the firemen's ball, they visit the local uh, stores that the locals do not go specifically our locals don't rent kayaks they don't rent the wetsuits they don't rent the boogie boards they don't have catering done there's a huge economic part of the stinson beach story that i haven't heard much about and i have talked this last few weeks to some of the 
business owners and they say, oh, I don't know anything about this. Well, that's kind of scary. So I would hope that part of what goes on after this is a better outreach to the actual business owners in all of West Marin and more consideration to what people are actually saying, because I know a lot of my clients- 20 seconds both, left. Both homeowners and guests have written letters of support of what they would miss. So thank you for your time and I apologize. Thanks, Katie. And I can say that, yeah, this is just the beginning of talking about this. We have plan or are plan actively planning additional engagement, identifying stakeholders, and appreciate all the people who have so far offered to, to help us with that as well. So thank you. Uh, next, is this the same, Randy? Well, I'm in a different mood. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna come back to you, um, and I'm gonna let Ashley Bird speak next. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to kind of put it out there that, and I know a few other people have been saying this, but I really do hope that you're hearing that there really does need to be some thoughtful and, and accurate data taken on whether or not these homeowners actually would rent their house out. Um, long term at a below market rate um, if short term rentals were not an option. Um, I think the concern that I have is that this is just going to leave us with more restrictions and really no more affordable housing than there was prior to this moratorium. Um, I am Katie's daughter and we have we are a family owned vacation rental company for 50 years and it is our experience that none of our owners would ever rent long term, let alone at a below market rate. And that's because they own these houses because they want to enjoy Stinson for what it is as well. So um, I just hope that, you know, you guys really do take and gather some accurate data to reflect, you know, what what regulations would bring to affordable housing. Um, I think no one on this call is arguing that affordable housing is not an issue. I just think the root of regulations on short-term re rentals um, fixing that problem is, is not necessarily there. Thanks. Next, we've got Andrew. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Wonderful. I'm a, a renter in Point Race Station. And I found this conversation so interesting. Uh, one aspect is that a lot of the, the short-term rental owners are, are asking or begging for data to disprove or prove that this policy is not effective. But something my wife and I did just the other night is we looked up how many long-term rentals are available in West Marin versus the 600 short-term rentals which are licensed and available in West Marin. And currently, according to our very brief search through the normal means, Craigslist and Zillow, there are five properties which are available for rent on a long-term basis in all of West Marin against 600, which are available on a short-term basis. And if there's any number that speaks to the problem that exists for residents that wanna live here and rent on a long-term basis, this is it. And so I've been a renter here for, for 10 years and I'm a Marin County native. And I have a lot of friends in town who have an existential fear that if for any reason their rental situation is jeopardized, they will no longer be able to live in West Marin. And these are people that grew up here and have lived here all of their lives. And so, I do believe that this ban is, is not only left. effective, but also should go further. And I can give specific examples of friends of mine who have been evicted and had to move out of town, in some cases out of state, with their families because they can no longer find a place to live where they grew up right here in this town. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Alyssa. 
Hi, I'll be quick. Huge thank you to the Marin County staff. You all are total heroes for holding this space. Um, I'm a lifelong Marin resident, current resident in Bolinas. I'm raising my family in Bolinas and we want more neighbors. We want more kids in the schools. We want more people going to the community health clinic. Um, there's been a lot of talk about affordable housing today. And I just want to say that, you know, I don't know if there's an official legal definition of affordable, but from my perspective, it's not black and white, it is a spectrum. And when houses go up for sale and my friends and local residents have to compete against professional investors buying their second, third, fourth, fifth and beyond home, um, and they can clear $10,000 a month on it, um, that, that drives up the price and that makes that home you know, less affordable and less accessible for people who wanna live in the community and, and, and be part of that. So I think that's really all I wanna say. I really appreciate you and um, Thank you for all your hard work. Thanks, Alyssa. Next is Christine Cordaro. Yes, thank you for taking my, my comment. Um, <clears throat> I'm a long-term resident here in, in Inverness Park, and I have a very quick question to ask. Um, in the interest of gathering data, and making more informed decisions. Um, I think it's really important to consider something else. I don't know that anyone, or maybe, maybe the county has gathered data on the demographics of the short-term rental owners themselves. How many are, sing, are doing this to supplement their retirement income? It's, it's basically one or two properties. What percentage are corporate um, entities, and what percentage are people who own multiple homes? Because I think that maybe making a, um, a set of regulations that just cover the entire spectrum of short-term rental providers might not be correct because they're all affected in a different way and one size doesn't fit all. So does that data exist somewhere? on the data of the, the demographics of the owners themselves. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the list is Michael Parman, but I do believe that you've spoken as well. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, no, yes, you're you not, have, you're not yeah, wrong. yeah. So I'm gonna, quickly. I'm gonna move on to the next person because oh, we that, still have folks that haven't spoken. Yeah, thanks. Um, next is Erica Lowry. Erica, you're, you're muted. So sorry. This is new to me. Can you hear me now? We can, yeah. Maybe? Yeah, we can hear can you. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes. Erica, right. we, we can hear you. Go ahead. Working? No. Heather, help me, girl. All right, I'll, we'll come back to you in a second. Um, there's only one off. more person that has their hand up that hasn't spoken yet, and that My is Michael has, Anderson. Okay, maybe they can hear me now. I don't know. I can't hear them. This is. Yeah, sorry. I'll, I've spoken to these, these before. Thank you, Sarah, uh, Kathleen, Fernando, very much. Um, for, for hosting this once again. I just wanted to, to jump in only because uh, there's been a lot of kind of conversation around the coastal uh, areas as well. I live in Lagunitas in the uh, STR. We live here. If we had kids, they would go to school down the street. Um, we, well, like it's it's tough to hear about the different kind of classes that we're talking about when we're, we're members of this community this is uh, supplementing our income. It was the reason why we were able to live out here. Um, very much want and am contributing. Um, and in the past four years, by your data, there's been one one filed complaint over four years in this area from STRs. So it's not an emergency situation in terms of quality um, 
and and yet you know this is something that we had to move here and discover along the way so it's it's tough to plan for this kind of thing thank you thank you and yeah we appreciate you continuing to come to these meetings all right erica have you got it figured out we can come back to you so this is uh this is kim bell chamber I, whatever we had to do to put our hands up we thought we did it but we we, we do want to speak you're speaking yeah okay um go ahead Okay, uh, a number of speakers have said, look, we need facts. We need to know the facts. We have some very important facts. The fact is that Marin is a coastal county. That means it has vast number of microclimates and population densities. It's got urban areas, suburban areas, agricultural areas, coastal areas, and vacation areas. And it also, uh, uh, Kim and I own a, own a house in uh, Dillon Beach. So I'd like to just focus on the two key points that you say the county is trying to get to. Affordable housing. Well, Dillon Beach, if you had no short-term rentals, that's seaside land. It's not possible to build affordable housing on seaside land. On the other hand, as Anna pointed out, affordable housing begins with a job. And that's a vacation economy there. That's all it is. and. Uh, Pushing forward with, with increasing moratorium on short-term rentals is going to hurt that economy. The other point that the county made was we want good neighbor policies. I'm not aware of any problems with that out there because another fact is we have cold nights. Nobody out there has big decks and big yards and big outside activities. And when people are outside, it's during the day at the beach. At night, it's cold. They're inside. So I've never seen any problems there. The, the, I, one second, one final point is that the goals of the county are, are not consistent with the goals of the Coastal Commission. The Coastal Commission eliminated- 20 seconds left. All of those long-term uh, mobile home rentals at Lawson's Landing because they felt that it was impeding the use of that recreational area by more people because so many long-term residents were there. So they, their goal was to get rid of the, the long-term residents. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, I see I see some movement on Erica. Um, Erica, do you wanna unmute and share? Be able to get this work. I'm gonna go to my computer you may just want to also try turning off your video if that might Thank that you. might stabilize the vo the voice cuz we can hear you all right actually erica you can let us know when you're ready and we will come back to you she could also submit her com comments in writing. That too, yes. Uh, Layla, we've got you next. Hi, all. I am calling from the funny farm that is my house at bedtime. Um, so, but I did want to say two quick things um, that I think would be really helpful. Um, there was a great, uh, so I'm calling from Bolinas. Um, I am very privileged and fortunate to um, be a homeowner here. And I think it's really important for everyone who owns their own home and potentially has a um, rental property to <laughs> acknowledge the privilege and the dichotomy, the difference between having shelter, you know, the storm we all just came through, having a home versus people who are literally unhoused or living in cars. I have, um, my husband and I own Smiley Saloon and Hotel in Bolinas, and we have staff who um, are unhoused or they live very far away and they travel. And so there needs to be all of the solutions to deal with the housing crisis, not just in Bolinas, not in West Marin, but in all of California. California as a whole is in a 
terrible housing crisis, which the um, governor really um, focused on in his recent budget conversation um, or his budget announcements. Um, there, California as a whole is incredibly expensive. And so, you know, the land trust is working on trying to build the, the unit, the property at downtown. We are trying to build where it is appropriate to do so, but it is a very small water constrained place. So um, regulations have been tested, tried, tested and litigated for years. So I would really encourage people to look carefully at what San Francisco did as the first to do it. And I think it would alleviate a lot of the concerns. Um, I don't think it was said, but it sort of goes without saying I believe that left. the goal is to move past the moratorium to allow some short term rentals as appropriate. Also, there are examples of where different communities can choose the cap. So Dillon Beach has a different cap than Sabalinas or Stinson. Um, that's an a example I'm familiar with from uh, Maui County, where much of my family lives. So I'll leave it at that. Um, thank you all for your patience and listening to us all. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Uh, next is Mark, Mark's iPhone. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Kathleen, for hosting this. Uh, I'm a homeowner in Bolinas. I have owned a home there for 25 years. And <clears throat> we've been renting uh, short-term rentals for a while. And, uh, you know, it helps us cover the costs of the home. We don't live there full-time anymore, but we do still spend a few months a year in Bolinas. Um, to a few of the points that were mentioned earlier, I really would love to get a better sense of seeing some data and some analytics that really help us understand what the impact of this uh, potential moratorium will be. I personally intuitively don't really understand how it's going to help affordable housing. Uh, I really worry about the impact that it'll have on the local community. I can tell you that myself for 25 years, I employ a lot of local people in the town, in the operation of the house, the maintenance of the house, the construction of the house, all the cleaning. Uh, and I also support all the local businesses in town with all the guests that stay at our house. So I think the, the impact on the community, which has driven a lot of the locals income comes from working on a lot of these homes and also uh, servicing the community and the different retail establishments within the community. So I really don't understand exactly how it happens. And and one other comment too is that I've, as 25 years, I've I kind of seen the real estate- 20 price, seconds left. Yeah, increase dramatically. And I've actually helped uh, three different families in town actually buy their their residences so that they would not be pushed out as as the prices went up. So that's my quick comment. I'm I'm not in support of any moratorium, but I am sympathetic to uh, the housing crisis. Um, Kathleen, you're on mute. Now I'm unmuted. Okay. Um, if anybody who had trouble raising their hand and wanted to speak, now would be the um, time to identify yourself. Otherwise, Randy and Michael, I do appreciate that you have more to share, but I want to be respectful of everybody's time, um, seeing that it's getting close to eight o'clock and we've lost about 50 people since we um, recently um, met. Oh, no. Uh, okay, Robert, this is going to be our last comment for the evening. So what I'm saying is this is going to be the last comment for the evening. Robert, um, you haven't spoken yet. You can go ahead. Okay, well, I did hold off. I teach political science and uh, have been a professional mediator in the past. Uh, in, among the places I teach political science is College of Marin. Uh, my family has had a place at uh, Dillon Beach for seven generations. I think we probably outdate most. Um, it sounds to me from listening to this discussion that there's a consensus, at least among these stakeholders, that uh, you need to target outside investors who don't uh, um, spend any time at the property and simply see it as an investment opportunity. 
It also seems really clear, and it was not clear from the county before, that you need to make discrete distinctions that Point Reyes Station is quite different than Dillon Beach. I'm astounded that the county supervisor responsible for West Marin is not at this meeting and isn't hearing these perspectives. I would hope that those who are registered to vote can consider whether or not that's the sort of supervisor you want. Uh, the other consensus point I keep hearing is that there needs to be some grandfathering clauses um, as you look at your new regulations. Um, that uh, clearly many people have spoken and are were caught in situations, whether buying a lot and getting an architect or buying a property dependent on this, that you need to deal with those issues. Um, and I continue to be astounded as someone interested in public policy. 20 seconds that, left. That this moratorium was imposed without the data that people are insisting on. Um, it's just ridiculous. And uh, people who made those decisions should be voted out of office or fired from their jobs. Thank you. All right. Um, I see Dennis Rodoni is here, so that was an error. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was the last last comment. Um, Michael and Randy, uh, let we can talk. We can talk about anything else that you'd like um, offline. You can submit anything in writing. Uh, we are collecting um, all of your comments and including them in the the public record for this project. Um, and I'm just going to put my contact in the chat, mstr at marincounty.org, uh, should you have any other questions, comments, follow up, um, we will be, we, we have recorded this meeting, we will be posting it on our website, you can go to our um, short term rental website and subscribe so that you can be kept informed of any of the updates, any of our communications, um, that would be, that would be great. Otherwise, I really thank you all for, for coming this evening and spending so much time with us going almost an hour after the meeting was scheduled. So really, really appreciate the interest and the passion and the, the comments that we received. Um, and we will be updating you shortly on next steps. And thanks, thanks. to Kathleen for, uh, for hanging in and doing a beautiful job facilitating tonight. Thanks. Yes, thank, for, thank you all for hosting. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll all be talking soon. So have a nice evening and we'll be in touch. Bye. Thank you. We hope to meet Rodini soon. <laughs>